Hi and welcome to Academic Compliance Academy of Law and Economics. In this video I'm going to talk about Calder Higgs efficiency in game theory. So what is Calder Higgs efficiency? So Calder Higgs efficiency or criterion as it is also called is based on the works of especially two economists Nicholas Calder and John Higgs. The efficiency is based on a utilitarian approach or tradition and states that strategy A is preferred to strategy B if those who gain from the move to strategy A gain enough to compensate those who might lose from the move. It is very important to understand here that they just need to be able to compensate. There is no actual demand of compensation when we talk about this criterion or efficiency. Let's try to look at it at, at a game theoretical framework. So put up here two by two matrix. We will now find the strategy that fulfills the Calder Higgs efficiency or the Calder Higgs criterion. I put the criteria up here. So if we just look at this, we have two players, each have two strategies, and we will just start in the up left corner. It doesn't really matter where we start. We will have to go through every strategy no matter what. Here, player one and player two both gets a payoff of two. So now we have to ask ourselves, is there another strategy that one of the parties prefer where they will gain more and be able to compensate whatever the other party may lose. Let's look at the numbers. So if they move to BC, they would get 2, 3, AD 5.0 and BD 9 and minus 1. Hmm. That means that all of the other strategies are actually fulfilling the criterion. Because if we move to strategy AD instead of AC, well, player one will get five, player two will get zero. But player one would be able to compensate and give player two the two that he originally would have gotten from strategy AC. And he would still be better off because he would get three instead of two. The same accounts for strategy BC, where it's just player two that actually gains on it and player one doesn't really lose anything. Then we have the last one, strategy BD, where player one gets a payoff of nine and player two minus one. We have to remember where we came from, two and two. So moving towards BD from AC actually gives player one nine and player two minus one, but player one will be able to compensate player two for his loss. The loss would be three. And then player one would still be left with six. So that would also fulfill the criterion. So now we have to ask ourselves, are all of these different strategies all Calder Higgs efficient? Well, not really because we will have to continue and look at the other strategies. When we look at strategy BC and AD, the total sum of them are both five and the allocation is the same, but it's just either player two or player one that will gain more and be able to compensate. But from both BC and AD, you would be able to make one more move. So you would be able to do what we could call a Calder Higgs improvement. We can fulfill the criterion one more time, moving to the strategy BD, where player one gets nine and player two gets minus one. The compensation level here would be okay. He could be, player one can compensate player two to any of the levels that they would be moving from. So a good rule of thumb is that if you want to find Calder Higgs and try to test this criterion, first you need to, of course, analyze each strategy and see if you can make this move where one gain more than the other one lose, so compensation is possible. But you can also, also check it by multiplying all the players pay off and see 
which which strategy has the largest sum when you sum uh, when you sum all the payoffs together and we can see that very clearly here that strategy a c would give four strategy b c five strategy a d five but strategy b d would give a total sum of eight hence there would be able to be compensation and player one could do that so this is the calter hicks efficient strategy in this game so there are of course some downsides to Carter Hicks and we have been into some of them. It is an optimization of the total wealth. It does not necessarily include the division or the allocation between the parties and we could see that in the last example that the most efficient, the Carter Hicks efficient strategy is actually where player two loses he, he gets a negative minus one and player one gets nine so player two is not satisfied with this and that is quite an unfair allocation and that is another critique because even though compensation should be possible for the criterion to be uphold or up, like, fulfilled compensation is not a requirement so be aware using Calder Hicks when analyzing, when using it in game theory, be aware of the, crit uh, the critiques that are, that maybe sometimes we should demand that there are compensation, that when it is possible to compensate and both parties be actually will get a better result by moving to the Calder Hicks efficient uh, strategy, then compensation may also be good to have as a mandatory requirement. So this was just a short video on how to analyze, how to use the Calder Hicks efficiency, Calder Hicks criterion in game theory. So stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, and let's talk much more about law and economics.